What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and we've got a fun episode today. We are going to be MIG welding some aluminum. Stick around. So here it is guys. This is the Yes Welder MIG 250 Pro. This is going to be part two of a three-part series. This is a 250 amp welder, MIG welder, that does MIG, TIG, stick, and they tout this as being a aluminum welder. This is actually marketed as an aluminum welder that you can MIG weld with. In last week's episode, we ran some solid 30 thousandths wire with C25 gas, and we discussed all the features of how that works with this welder. And we're gonna do the same thing in this week's episode, but we're just gonna be running aluminum. If you're thinking about getting this welder or even you have a MIG welder that has lots of features like this one does, this could be very interesting about what the settings do, what is burn back, what is inductance, and how all of that plays in. We discuss all of that in last week's episode. At the time of this episode, this welder is $539. Now I know that's a lot of money, but this is a multi-process welder. Like I said, it'll do MIG, it does TIG, it does stick, and it does aluminum, and it's a fully synergic welder. And it's also will weld in manual mode. Synergic meaning that you've just set a couple parameters and the machine figures out everything else, you know, wire speed, voltage, amperage. It has a lot of features of my high-end welder, which is sitting right there, which is my Feronius. So let's get to going on getting this set up to use some aluminum wire. First things we got to do is whenever you're working with aluminum wire, you got to have clean consumables. So we're going to have to change the liner out of this MIG gun. It comes with that Teflon coated liner. The reason for that, guys, is that aluminum wire is much more flexible than solid wire or even flex coil wire. So it needs to have uh, the added slipperiness so it can actually push it out through the MIG gun. And another great feature of this welder, you can see right here, it's also spool gun capable. Right now I've got it into the MIG mode, but if you wanted to hook up a spool gun to it, just hit the switch and now you're on spool mode. That would be an additional feature, but you can see that's where you would hook up the spool gun right there. So we will start by getting that little BB off the end We'll cut it flush so that that way it doesn't drag when we pull it back through the liner. So now with our tension released, now we can just reel the wire backwards and remove it from inside that liner. So now we're going to swap out the liner. So let me show you the steps that it takes to do that. First thing you're going to do is remove this guide spring. Just, I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers, just pull it out of the machine. And then set this aside somewhere where you won't lose it. I just throw everything in the bottom of the case. And then you can see right here that there's a little C-clip that has to be taken off. And I'll show you how to do that. And if you need more room, you can remove the drive roll, which is right there. Now there is a little keyway, or a little key I should say, that can fall out right there. So make sure you don't lose that. There's also like a little flat washer in behind that as well. And to remove this C-clip guys, I've just got a little inexpensive cheap pick from Harbor Freight and I'm just gonna stick it in there and pry it out. And there it is and it fell right down into the bottom of the cabinet. And that is the piece that you're removing right there. Like I said, I'll just put that in the cabinet along with my spring. And you can see that I keep uh, drive rolls and everything else in here. And now we will move, remove the MIG gun itself from the machine. And there we go. Now just take this and stretch it out along the floor. And while it's here, although not completely necessary, remove your nozzle and remove your contact tip because you're probably going to have to change out uh, the size for your wire anyways. Might as well get that out of there as well. Now you can take this and complete it assembly and stretch it out along the floor. Now using a 12 millimeter wrench, I'm just going to loosen this little piece right here and remove it. And that's going to expose our liner. Our liner is underneath that. Grab this. There you are. 
pull this back and this is the old liner. We're going to take it completely out. So now we got the liner out. Now we got to remove this piece right here. So just push on it just like that because that piece we need to help measure the liner. Then the easiest thing I find is just to grab a magnet and reach in there and pull that piece out just like that. That's where we remove that little e-clip from on that end. You see it's already got one installed on that end. So hang on to this, set it aside. Now we're just going to open up the bag that our liner came in. Comes with some contact tips. Now you guys really want to keep uh, this stuff separated. You definitely don't want to run steel wire or stainless wire through your liner designed for aluminum. It's just not a good idea. Uh, it's going to contaminate everything and it's going to wear this out a lot faster than necessary. I'm going to leave this liner aside, the original liner. I've got it just extended along my table and it's running down and up. We'll feed the new liner in, cut it to length, and then we'll compare it to the measurement of this. Here's your coil and it's got a little ferrule on the end of it. Just leave the ferrule as it is and grab this side and you're going to start feeding this down through the liner of your gun. So again this gun is stretched out across the floor of the shop and you're just going to start feeding it in. Might fetch up in a couple places along the way. Just make sure you're pushing it far enough, giving it some turns so that you know it's all the way there. All right, so when this won't go in any further into that liner, and I've messed with it and moved it, it appears is that there is 176 millimeters sticking out of the gun. You can see I'm holding that right against that opening, and that's... 176 millimeters, which also looks to be about six and seven eighths of an inch. So now just take this little ferrule piece, now that you've pushed the liner in as far as it will go, and let it seat inside that, just like that. And go ahead and put the nut back on and lightly snug it up. Now this piece that we removed earlier, we're going to use this as a measuring device. Just to test this, I'm going to hold that little piece on the ferrule, uh, on the nut, just like that, and I'm going to put a mark. See here, this is where I'd want to cut it, right where I put that little silver mark. But I want to compare this silver mark to the length of the liner that I just removed. So I did verify that this liner is pretty much the same length is the liner that we removed from it. So now again, I'm just gonna take this piece, hold it right flush to the front, and snip it off. There we go. Now I'm just gonna feed it back into the machine. Feed it through like before, and line everything up, and start tightening it up. And there you go, you can see our liner right there as it sticks through. So now you're just going to pick the drive roll that says the U on it and the U is for aluminum wire. You can see another U there. So you just want to put the size wire that you're going to be using facing inwards. So we're going to be using 1.2 which is 45 thousandths so we're going to make that towards the inside. So line it up with the key, little keyway down in there. And it looks like I've got to trim the liner just a little bit because you don't want it contacting that drive wheel. You see how close that is? So I might have to trim it just a little bit. The idea behind this is you want to get this liner as close as you can to the wheel without touching it. If you got to go in a couple times and just do a little trimming here and there, go ahead and do it. So taking off just a little bit more and again feeding it back through. There. That's much better guys. Just a few thousandths of an inch gap between the edge of the liner and the edge of the drive roll. 
Matter of fact, the pick, the edge of the pick just barely can fit into that gap. So that's what you want. So the line is close to the wheel, but it's not actually touching. And you're going to leave this spring out. So this is all set up now to push some aluminum wire through. So I'm going to start out with some 45 thousandths Fronius aluminum wire. And I'm going to be using 5356. And the reason for that is 5356 is just a little bit uh, stiffer wire. And the difference between you know, 4043 and 5356, 5356 is a, a little bit more stronger wire. Uh, and instead of having 5% silicone like 43 does, this wire has 5% magnesium. Let's feed it in. This is good stuff. A little close up of the wire. This is the, uh, this is the details on it. And yeah, this is really good stuff. And I have some 4043 as well. Maybe we'll try that. But I think just for the rigidity of this, that uh, this will probably work better in this machine and the reason for that guys is is that the reason they make a spool gun is because you have to keep this whip pretty straight for this aluminum wire to feed down through without getting jammed up by the time it comes out of the end of the mig gun uh, that's the issue with it so you really got to get your tension feed set right on these and if you want to know about setting tension feed um, I've talked about it in great length in last week's video you can check out up there but I'll also cover it in this video because it's important that if you're going to feed aluminum down through this liner that it feeds smoothly under the right tension so we'll we'll go over that as well so this will go on just like any other reel of wire And guys, this is the tension I set first. You can set this tension without it even being fed. And that's actually a little too tight. All you're doing, guys, is you're making sure that this wire, when you pull the trigger, doesn't keep spinning. So I can actually back this off a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. You want this wire, guys, so that is very little resistance. But when you let off it, it doesn't keep going. Because if it keeps going, What's going to happen is after a while, especially when your reel gets a lot lighter because you've used up a lot of the wire, um, you'll let off the trigger, the MIG trigger, and this will keep going. Then it will unwind in the back or in the front and make a knot. It'll just give you all kinds of problems. So take care of that issue now. Then just trim your wire, making sure you're hanging on to it. You don't want this stuff to get out of control on you. Trim it off. There we go. Get rid of this little tag piece here. Okay, now we're going to feed that into where that spring used to be. Then you're going to feed the end of your wire into your Teflon liner or graphene liner or whatever you want to call it. So I've got that threaded in a couple inches. Now we can close the drive rolls and keep an eye on it and start feeding it. We haven't done anything with our gas because you gotta be on pure argon. We haven't talked about any of the uh, polarity settings on the front or any of the faceplate settings. We're gonna go over all of this stuff, guys. So turn it on. So you wanna keep this uh, line pretty straight and stretched out if you can. Uh, it just, it's gonna make things a lot easier. I don't wanna go too fast, but here we go. Hasn't come out the end yet. We don't have any problems yet. Okay, you can see we got a little problem there. So you saw this drive wheel slipping, guys. So what I did was I just moved the MIG gun to help move things around. That's common too when you're feeding either solid wire or even flux core. So that's not a big deal. So I moved it. Now I'll hit the jog switch again. And let's see what happens. And you can see the wire coming out. Good. Okay, we're all set. And maybe you can see that, maybe you can't, but it's actually stamped 45 thousandths right on this contact tip. So now we will thread the contact tip on. Give it a little bit of tension to cinch it up. You can see, just pull the trigger, make sure it's still coming out. There it is, see that? 
and slide your nozzle back on. Trim your wire flush to the nozzle. We're ready to weld except for our gas and our settings. So this is where it starts getting really fun. I've got a uh, straight argon hooked up to our machine. I've took, taken off our C25, which is that right there. That's for solid wire. So I got straight argon going into it so that we can start welding some aluminum. And we will start setting our gauge on this here just in a minute. But let's turn it on and go over the settings. All right, unfortunately, this thing is pretty loud. So if you click on mode here, mode, and I'll, I've talked about it in last week's episode, that's manual welding, so manual MIG welding, and that's where you set your voltage and amperage independently of one another, so that is not what is synergic. Synergic, that is when you set your amperage and it automatically sets your voltage and wire feed speed, or you set your voltage and it determines your amperage and wire feed speed based on that and you can see right here you can toggle through different menus of uh, that is C25 gas FE is ferrous metal so that would just be like carbon steel so let's keep toggling through that is stick welding that is TIG welding so we are going to be doing synergic now we're going to select our material so we toggle this so we're not using flux core 30 thousandths. There you go, there's aluminum. Top of it is 100% CO2 ferrous metal, C25 gas ferrous metal, or stainless steel with 100% argon. Flux core wire, aluminum 100%. So now that we've got our material set, now we gotta set our wire diameter. So now we just press that, toggle down through, there it is, 45 thousandths. So your choices for aluminum are 35 and 45. There we go. So now we're set on 45 thousandths. So now we're going to set our amperage. Now if you look at the box that the wire came in and you go down to 45 thousandths and come all the way over to aluminum, you'll see that 45 thousandths wire on aluminum wants to have a range between 150 and 200 amps. So let's start out with 150. So we press this button right here. There's aluminum voltage. There's aluminum amperage. And we will turn that up to 150. We'll start right there. There we go. So there's 150 amps, 13.5 volts. And then we can set our inductance, our 2T or 4T, High frequency start, that is uh, wire feed speed, burn back time, inductance, and then we're back, you know, we're back to the beginning. So if you want to know what inductance and all these other features that I just talked about, what those do and how they affect your bead profile and your weld quality, go look at that other video that I've just linked into part one because I talk about all of those settings and those settings all apply. Uh, the same to this process or flux core. So they'll be helpful to everyone. So we're just going to keep our settings for now uh, as the default settings and we will adjust them up or down as necessary. So we've already set the minimum tension on the roll. Now we need to make sure that our drive rolls have the proper tension because not enough tension and the wire is just going to slip through these drive rolls and it's not going to come out the nozzle evenly. Too much tension and what's going to happen is is that if it gets bound up on the gun end that it's just going to keep feeding it. It's not going to slip and then it's going to cause what's called a bird's nest and that means that instead of feeding it through the liner it's restricted and then it starts feeding it back into the cabinet. So let me show you how to set the proper tension on the MIG gun. Take a block of wood, hold the MIG gun at about a 45 degree angle to the wood, pull the trigger going to feed out. Okay, so I'm still pulling the trigger. You see how the wire stopped feeding? I need more tension. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the tension just a little bit by turning this dial a quarter of a turn. I want to show you an example of what this looks like when it's not feeding correctly. Watch how the wire comes out. It comes out, stops, comes out, and stops. It needs to be smooth. Watch. 
just stop. Now it's going, stop, going, stop. So it needs more tension. So that is the setting that I ended up going with that's working really well. And let me show you what it looks like on the gun. We'll put a little bend in it and watch how smoothly this will coil around. See that guys? And with solid wire, aluminum or MIG or any other, you want to be DC electrode positive. Earth is going to be negative for your ground clamp. Now we are super close to start welding guys. So what you want to do is turn on your bottle, stand off to the side, turn it on real slow, open it all the way up because that's how argon bottles seal. I just turned on the machine and I'm holding the MIG gun in my hand so I can activate the solenoid. And I'm just pulling the solenoid and you're going to want to be about 30 CFH of argon at minimum. All gauges are different, but if you look at your gauge, this is a flow meter, you'll see that it's showing an example of a ball and it's saying with the arrows to read the ball, uh, read the, the measurement at the middle of the ball. So that's how we got to tell. So we want to bring our 30 CFH, the ball needs to be right in the middle of there. Uh, anywhere between 30 and 50 CFH for aluminum is good. So we'll check it again one last time. And I might just be a little strong over 30. I'd rather have a little more than a little less. There we go. To make it perfect, I'd be right about probably there would be the center of the ball. So we are ready to start welding. We've got everything set up. But what I wanted to go over with you with real quick is uh, I've got some coupons here and I just kind of like buy them by the package and it's really good to kind of like get yourself set up or even do practice on uh, because they're all sealed and I'll have a link down below where I get these they're really cheap these are eighth inch this is sixteenth uh, these are a little thin for 045 wire but you know we'll make do guys we'll make do with what we got so I'm gonna grab a couple of them uh, maybe we'll pad some beads. Maybe we'll do a butt joint. I don't know, but we'll give it a try. And I'll have a link, like I said, to, to these. And I'll link that welder down below. And if you use the promo code, you're also going to get a huge discount. All right, guys, welding aluminum requires that this be really clean. So in order to get a good weld, you're going to need to clean this the proper way. So the first thing you want to do uh, is get yourself some acetone. Clean the part first with acetone. After you've cleaned it with acetone, then you want to go through and remove the oxide layer using a stainless brush. Now, what I like to do is I got a stainless brush and I write aluminum on it, and this will not contact anything other than aluminum. So that way I know that this isn't going to contaminate my aluminum. So make sure you do it in that order. Don't switch it around. Don't remove the oxide, then do the acetone. Uh, you want to do the acetone, then remove the oxide. And removing this gets rid of the grease and oil. Make sure you're wearing some gloves on your fingers, one, so that you're not uh, getting your fingers in acetone, and two, so that you're not transferring finger oils back onto the aluminum. And this flash is off pretty quick, guys. So you can see that it cleans up pretty quick. And what you want to make sure is, is that you know, you don't want to leave this sitting out in the atmosphere for overly long. You pretty much want to clean it and then have a plan to weld it. In other words, no dilly-dallying. Get it clean and get it welded. Because I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm just going to do uh, like a butt weld or if I'm going to just pad some beads. I might do a combination of everything. I'll, I will uh, wire brush this entire surface to get it all clean. What I'm trying to do is there's a layer of oxide that builds up on aluminum and you want to try to get that off so that you can weld it properly. Aluminum needs to be really clean to get a good weld. Now we're just going to talk real briefly guys about disposing of highly flammable rags or even paper towels. So get this acetone away from your welding area, preferably in a metal cabinet somewhere out of the way. And you want to take all of your rags and throw these into like a metal container that has a lid on it so that that way these don't spontaneously combust. You can see this is what I have guys and this is just filled with solvent rags. You can see it's been in there for a long time. It's got stains and solvent rags and then I just cover it up. And that's just basically a trash can that you can get at any big box store but uh, in the event that 
a fire does start, it's inside a metal container and uh, it's got a lid on it so it's going to starve it of oxygen. Now we're going to talk about technique before I start doing this, okay? So unlike MIG welding, from your contact tip to your work surface, you're going to want about three quarters of an inch, no less than that. Between three quarters of an inch to like an inch away. Uh, you know, with MIG, you're going to hold it a really fairly close gap. If you do that when you're welding aluminum, you'll get burn back. And what that is, is that the wire will actually burn. It'll burn back into this contact tip right here. And it'll basically just fuse itself, the wire, to the contact tip. You don't want that. So you're going to hold a work distance of about three quarters to one inch. And your travel is also going to be different. You're not going to pull like you, like you can with MIG. You're going to push. With flux core, you want to drag, right? Because you don't want inclusion. But with this, with solid aluminum wire, you want to push. So you're pushing the, the weld puddle. So in this case, in my example, I'm working left to right, I'm pushing it forward. So that way, and the idea is, is that the coverage gas is coming out through the nozzle, covering everything as it's laying down and it's shielding it. And for angle, you want around 10 degrees, approximately. Simulating that I'm welding this way, okay, I would have about 10 degrees of angle going like this, holding it roughly 3 quarters of an inch. And that's 3 quarters of an inch from your contact tip. Okay, so I think I might have some issues here as far as, like I said, this wire size, but uh, let's set the machine real quick and I'll show you how I came up with that. And like I say, these coupons are eighth of an inch and eighth of an inch is 125 thousandths. So if you remember right, the wire suggested range was 150 to 200. Well, eighth inch metal is 125 thousandths. So using the formula one thousandths, uh, one amp per 1,000, that would give me a current or an amperage of 125,000. That would be a good starting uh, amperage. So, which is 12.5 volts. Again, we'll just go over all the settings real quick. It's in synergic mode. I'm running aluminum, 100% argon gas, 045 wire. Uh, a better choice would have been 35,000. I just don't have any. And all I've got is the 45. So, we'll give it a try. I think I might be uh, having a hard time with this, but hey. We don't know until we try it. So guys, this is a fairly smoky process, so you're going to want to wear a respirator. Um, I'm not going to wear one just this minute because I'm going to try to be talking with you as I do it, and you're not going to be able to hear me. You're going to want to make sure that your whip coming off your machine to your gun is as smooth as it can be so it eliminates any feeding problems. We didn't really talk about it much, but the reason a spool gun is nice is that the wire is up here by your hand, so it's really only feeding it the spool out this much, like, you know, a foot, foot and a half, versus, you know, 10 feet of lead that it's pushing through here. So it just eliminates all those feeding problems with making sure that your line is really smooth and uh, kink free. Just kind of gives you a little bit more freedom, but then again, it's a little more bulkier because you have a big, you know, piece up at the top. Another thing I like to do is, our gas is on, obviously, is hit the trigger a few times. Hear that? Get your gas flowing. So that way when you first start your arc, gas is flowing immediately. And one last thing, if you're doing this right, on the right amperage with the right thi uh, thickness material, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this here because I think my aluminum is just too thin to be able to do it, um, you should not hear the like proverbial bacon sound of what you hear when you're uh, MIG welding. What you're going to hear is almost like a hissing sound. It's like a it's just that you'll hear a lot of that sound, almost like a leaky airline, uh, because you're actually in like spray transfer mode. That's kind of what it should sound like if it's doing it right. I've got about an eighth of an inch gap between this plate. All right, I did a little test piece, guys, and it was just way too cool. So. Um, I turned up my heat settings up to about 150 right now, and we'll see how this does. Uh, 
Uh, saying I gotta go a little hotter. I turned it up a little bit higher. We're now at 175. I have a feeling that this is probably gonna be the sweet spot. Definitely better. We run a few beads on it. All right, guys, none of these settings are really working. Uh, this one is close right here. That one's all right. But again, this is eighth inch metal with 45 thousandths wires. The wire is just kind of too big. So um, that was too cold. That was a good setting. Uh, so what I'm going to do is this is some TIG welding I did a while back. So I've got a piece of thicker aluminum here. It's not quite quarter inch, but it's a lot better than this eighth inch. I'm going to clean it up. We'll try padding a few beads on this and see how it does. I think it's going to do a lot better with this. Another great resource too, guys, is you can use an online welding calculator. So I've got a material thickness gauge here that I use all the time to verify my material thicknesses before I weld them. You can see what that is. It gives you uh, standards and it also gives you, you know, in wire gauge and in thousands. So I verified that that is, this aluminum is 3 16 so what you can do is go to Miller Weld's online calculator and then you'll select the material you're using from the drop down menu so you can see we're using aluminum so I've already selected that let's select the uh, diameter so 3 16 and it's given us uh, wire size the, the ideal wire size would be 35 thousandths and there's your inch per minute. There you go, 364 ths right there. It's saying 300 to 325 inch per minute, and that's what we're using for wires, 364 ths And it's saying between 140 to 150 amps. So let's go to the high side of that. Let's go right to a 150. All right, here we go. That's just sitting on top. Definitely needs more amperage. 200 was way too hot. It actually started blowing a hole through it. So we've swung it from 150 to 200. Let's go uh, 175. That's better. That's getting better. All right, guys, I have been playing with this for a little while. And I think I've got it almost as about as good as it's probably going to get um, with this wire. Again, this wire is a little too thick, uh, a little too big for what I'm trying to do here. Uh, but right now I'm at 180, 180 amps, 15.5 volts. And it's starting to get probably the best it's been so far. And I will just, I'm just kind of like padding beads. I'm, I'm, I started over here and I'm working this way towards myself maybe, you know, three inch stringers. And I'm just trying to find out which setting works best. So far, 15.5 amp, 15.5 uh, volts, 180 amps. Let me try 185. Yeah, I think I might even like that a little better. I kind of like 185 a little better. So there it is guys, I just, you know, kind of just kept playing around and padding beads and that's what you would do with, you know, with any new process that you're just starting out on, uh, whether it was MIG or flux core, you know, pick up a piece of metal and just start welding on it. And this was like the first arc, then it was too cold, too cold, a little still too cold, starting to make better adjustments, it's starting to get better as we get over here, I think this was right around 170. Then uh, we changed it a little bit here. Then I just kept padding some more beads, padding some more beads. And I think I settled right around 180, but um, I really would like to use 35 thousandths wire for this. I think it would work much better, but I can tell you that this is a very capable machine of welding aluminum. I didn't have any feeding problems whatsoever. Very happy with this machine. I obviously need a little more practice in messing with it, but uh, it's very capable and you can right out of the box fairly quickly
be able to stick two pieces of aluminum together, no problem. And that's all there is to it, guys. Once again, I forgot to turn on my shop fan, so my shop is filled with smoke, as always. But until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. New videos every Friday. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. If you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using, I'll have links down below in the description. And like I said, there's all kinds of promo codes that are associated with those that are going to get you some money off on checkouts. New videos every Friday, so I will see you guys next week. Take care. Stay safe. See ya. Come, come.